just rub our hands together this Sunday morning and then also the Lord. Father, we do thank you for this day, Lord, and as we celebrate this week, uh, Thanksgiving as a national holiday, Lord, we are called to give thanks in everything for this the will of God in Christ Jesus. And so this morning, Lord, we come with thankful hearts, Lord, and so we just pray that you would just anoint our time together as a family of God, calling upon you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God's people say, Amen. Who forgives? 
forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Let's give the Lord thanks this morning.
our thanks this Sunday. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll see. 
you that all to take it from here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Okay, I think we got covered today. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to offer Tori meditation. Holy God, give her adversity and comfort, but also disruption. We are living in uneasy times, and our tendency is to hoard, hold back, and hide from the uncertainty of the world. Help us to see your light that shines through, even in unsettling times, to help us find our way to you. We offer our tithes and offerings this morning, not to adorn a monument to you, but to be part of a living testimony. Light will overcome darkness. Hope will overcome despair. Compassion will overcome injustice. And love wins over hate. In thankfulness we give, and in thankfulness we pray. Amen. We'll do the doxology, and then as the offering plate is down here, we'll continue to come down and put our, our estimate of giving hearts in there, and we'll seek the Lord in prayer. Let's give it up for us. Praise God from all who all blessings flow.
Father's Day, and that's each and every Sunday. But in actuality, it is an invitation. It is an invitation, not just from the pastor, but it's an invitation from Christ himself. So as we come to this table, it is made ready, it is prepared for us to receive the elements, the bread and the cup, which represents Christ's body broken and his blood poured out upon the cross of Calvary. And so each and every time that we come to this table, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. So once again, this Sunday morning, as you come to this table to receive, come with a grateful heart, give thanks, because he's given us Jesus Christ. Let the weak say they are strong, let the poor say that they are rich. Let us come, come on, come on. Let us worship the Lord in our song of communion this Sunday morning as well with my soul.
gave thanks, give it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. When you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. And Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he offered it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood of the covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. YouTube videos and a recent Apple update on the phone fix it so yeah I can start posting again. All right. Let's just thank you for that that app that uh, was available. Carol. I'm thankful that the Lord has allowed me to watch my granddaughters grow up. They're 21 and 24 respectively. And as they were young and the bond I had with them, I hoped against hope that I would live long enough that they would understand salvation and being with the Lord instead of me just thinking that I can let them. And um, I praise God for that. Amen. Chris Cook, good word. Thanksgiving. How was this morning anyway? Lord. Um, we celebrated our youngest granddaughter and Judy's birthday at the age turned two. Well, she turned two on the Tuesday. But, and um, we had a wonderful time. And then this morning, she wakes up with pink eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? Denise? Yes, we have Tracy in prayer. She goes for surgery tomorrow. I've been thankful for the parents that when I put my text down, every reminder that youth group is coming up, that I get texts back that say my kids will be there. And thanks for reminding us. And just thank God that. May not get here in church on Sunday morning, but they do come on Sunday morning. Yeah, that's good, yes. That's nice that we have uh, a good bit of youth coming on our youth uh, evenings and uh, reaching out and giving them uh, the hope of Jesus Christ. It's so important. Paul? Yeah, first of all, give the Lord thanks for my two girls and my, all my friends. And, uh, and, uh, the girls have done a great job there. And, uh, getting big and and I'm going uh, uh, thank the Lord for Danny Cooley down at Friday night. I was back she had a very, very sick. She's been, been in debt ever since. And this morning she's coming around just a little bit. But praise the Lord. Absolutely. Let's pray for Jenny. Any others this morning I'd like to plan? I just want to say I have to thank you for my boys and the help that we have. Um, but if we can keep the 
Michelle Perry in prayer. She had uh, she had cancer and she had a surgery. She's going for surgery, or she had the surgery. Had surgery. And we can find our prayers and our prayer list. Anyone else would like to lift up? We need to Joyce. Um, as far as thanks, I just passed away two many days ago. Thank you for. Yes. Um, but the main thing is God. Let's give God praise for that because He is our God. Strengthen her, 
Father, we pray, Lord, for Cheryl Heron, who has cancer. Ms. Lamb has lifted her up, oh God. We too, as the church, lift her up in our prayers and ask that, Lord, that you would just comfort her this time of her health situation. Lord, that you would just help the physicians and every time she has to go for uh, surgery or treatments, Lord, we, we pray, God, it will, it will help her. Lord, we lift up Jerry and Danny, Lord, and quickly we ask, God, that you will provide um, a furnace, Lord, that would be adequate, Lord, to be able to heat them in that house. And Lord, our hearts and our prayers go out for March today, Lord, in, in her recovery. And we ask, God, that you would just touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. Thanking you today, God, that you're not only a providing God, but you're a healing God. You're a God who answers our prayers. So today, Lord, as we now go into the message this morning, I pray we all have ears and hearts to receive from the Master. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God's people say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, would you open them up with me today to the book of 2 Corinthians, 9th chapter, verses 10 through 15. And as though we are in the week of Thanksgiving, and also we uh, kicked off our uh, stewardship campaign a few weeks ago, and uh, today we brought forth our our uh, giving estimated giving cards. Today's title of the message is Thanksgiving and generosity go hand in hand. How many believe that today? Because we're going to listen this morning to Paul's writing to the Church of Corinth, and there's some repetition on the scriptures that we may have used last week, and oftentimes when we we teach or we preach, you know, we, we read a scripture, but it's hard to digest it and to be able to get deep into it. Um, but God does not, doesn't just want to bless us so um, we can meet our needs, but he does it so that you and I can meet the needs of other people. Do you believe that this morning? God blesses you, God blesses me. And whether, you know, it's not about how much, but... What we get comes from the hand of God. And as we give generously in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the recipients can thank God. And I, and I think that's very important for us when we do do our giving. We don't realize sometimes that when you give to a mission field or you give to someone that you may never see on this side of heaven, you know, how you are... Um, Helping others to be thankful to God. And it was because of your generosity, it was because of your giving. And it produces thanksgivings, you know, that go to people throughout our, our world. Let's look at the scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, starting in verse number 10. It says, He who supplies seed to the sower. Who's he who supplies seed? Come on, anybody? God, right? God, he's the one who supplies, gives us the ability. It says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce what? Say it together. Thanksgiving to God. If there is something that's being productive. It's producing thanksgivings to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing, again, let's say, thanksgivings to God. So there is something that's overflowing, and that's thanksgiving. Just like Joyce said, there are so many things that we can be what? Thankful for. We could take up, you know, a whole week in this church just to, you know, everyone express how many things we have to be thankful for. We generalize a lot of things real quick. It's usually our family, our health. Those are the first couple things that usually come to the top of our head. But if we sat down and jotted a journal, I tell you what, we probably, all of us could fill a book. A, a, a huge book. The scripture says, by their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession 
of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Did you know that there's a surpassing grace of God upon you today because of your faithfulness? Let's all say the ending part of the scripture. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. And who is that inexpressible gift? Jesus Christ. Give thanks because, that song says, he's given us Jesus Christ. So gratitude, as we talk this morning, doesn't just come because you and I receive something. Generosity also inspires what I like to believe, thankfulness in the one who is. That gratitude gets translated into more and more and more generosity. It's nice to be able to give somebody something, isn't it? Especially when somebody really needs it. And to be able to see a change in their life and how things happen because we begin to step out and to, to help somebody and to give. And that produces thanksgivings, you know, to God and also to you. It's cyclical, and I like to call it addictive. Did you know giving is addictive, church? At least it should be. It should be. If we look at what we have as something that we've earned, we hold on to it sometimes tightly. This is mine. We become like a, a, a miser. This is mine. I earned it. I can do with it with what I please. Well, maybe so. But if we recognize that God gave us the ability to make the money, it's natural to see ourselves as stewards of what he has entrusted to us. Some of us more, some of us less. But we are entrusted to God to be good stewards over what he has given. One of the keys, I believe, to thankfulness and generosity, as I said, goes hand in hand, is seeing that everything belongs to God. Can you say amen to that? Everything belongs to God. And when you process that, when you really step, sit down, we don't process that usually. We we'll say it and hear it in a sermon and in church. But think about it. Everything belongs to God. There's a story just kind of cut in, and it's a little funny. Why don't you listen to it? And I saw it from an uh, illustration, a time to worship. And I read a story of a woman who had finished her shopping, and it was quite humorous, and she returned to her car to find four men inside of it. She dropped her shopping bag, drew out a handgun from her purse, and with a forceful voice, she says, I have a gun, and I know how to use it. She said, get out of the car, and those men did not wait a second for a second invitation. They got out, and they ran like crazy. Well, the woman, understandably, she became quickly loaded her shopping bags, got into the car. She just wanted to get out of there as fast as she could, but no matter how hard she tried, she wouldn't get the key to the ignition. <laughs> I think you know what I'm going <laughs> She looked at herself and said, this isn't my car. <laughs> well, her car was about four or five spaces, you know. She got out and looked around to see if the men were near, loaded her bags in her own car, drove to the police station to turn herself in. Well, the death sergeant, after hearing the story, he about fell off of his chair. And he pointed to the other end of the counter and went down the hall and he says, where the four men were recording their carjacking of a woman with glasses and curly white hair less than five feet tall, carrying a handgun was there. <laughs> the end of the story, no charges were filed. <laughs> you know, sometimes we overreact to things and sometimes we get sidetracked. You know, just funny about a couple weeks ago, I was coming out of our central office where I work at, and uh, you know, I'm going to my car. I usually, you know, it's my little beater up car. <laughs> I usually hide away in the back because everybody got all these Ovals and Mercedes and all these things are not there. And I said, Oh, wow, there's a car like mine right over there. I said, Somebody else is in my seat. 
some predicament. And so, in not paying attention, I go walk under the car, start putting my key into the trunk, and I looked up and I went, hey, this isn't my car. <laughs> and I moved over, I looked to the left, looked to the right, and everything was watching me. Sometimes we get sidetracked, and, you know, you don't realize, but sometimes I think about what I have, what I possess, and, you know, God's blessed myself, my family, over the many years, and we try to be good stewards of what God gives us, and yes, sometimes, you know, we feel we deserve something, you know, a little nicer, a little better, but oftentimes, too, we, we have done with what we have. We sit back and thank God, and um, what I call the little beater, you know, I have my big truck that gets maybe 16, 15, 16 miles a gallon going all the way to Pittsburgh, you know, the price of gas right now, well, I got a little beater upper, and it gets about 35 miles a gallon, and it doesn't look the best, but it sure saves on the pocketbook. So sometimes we need to be thankful for what we have and appreciate it for when we have it and the purpose. Mark tells us about a rich young ruler who comes to Jesus looking for eternal life. So look at the scripture here this morning in Mark's Gospel. Since now as he was going out on the road, one came running down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear a false witness, do not do fraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Sometimes we overlook that particular part of that verse. Loved him. He wasn't there to judge him. He wasn't there to ridicule him. He said they had one thing you lack. How many know that God's looking out for all of our life and everything? The things that maybe that are holding us back from really stepping out and giving him our all. He told him and asked him, he said, he said, go your way, sell whatever you have, give it to the poor. And he said, you will have treasure in heaven and come take up your cross, the cross and follow me. But in the story, the man was sad at what Jesus had said. And he went away sorrowful. The Bible said he had great possessions. Probably way more than any of us would ever have, but nonetheless, to each their own. You know, Jesus tells him to sell everything he has and give it to the proceeds to the poor. Oftentimes, maybe people struggle with this particular scripture. Does Jesus require us to go sell everything and just be impoverished ourselves and, you know, live a bag of one life? No. But there are things maybe that we need to look at in our own lives of what we do need and what we can give. And that's a daily thing. That's a daily encounter with God. You know, it's sometimes a snapshot when we hear a message like this, but every day we should come to the Lord and say, Lord, uh, what would you want me to do with what I have here? And Sometimes on a Sunday morning, you don't know throughout the year what may be presented, what need may be presented, or you, like Bob, just gave a testimony how he encountered this person in a wheelchair. You never know what's going to take place in our day and how we can help someone out and give. Sometimes we hold so tightly to our stuff we can't obey what God is telling us to do. We don't recognize that as we give to others, God in turn blesses us with joy. I thought I was going to say maybe with money. But he blesses us with joy. And he also blesses us with thanksgiving. That we were able to help another one of us. As Christians, as believers, you know, we have been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Oftentimes we use that to rattle off 
demonic spirits, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever we loose on earth shall be loose from heaven. But as we also give, there's a joy that God gives to us. And we're able to thank God that we have the ability to touch a life, maybe even change a life. We're told by our consumer culture that we'll be happier the more stuff that we have. And how many know that's not true? Come on. Except if I win the billion lottery and a billion dollar lottery and I still be happy. Probably not. Why is that? You know, money will answer a lot of things, even why Solomon said that. It answers all things. But one thing it won't, it will not fill the void that is in a soul. Only God, His peace and His joy, being content in the presence of God. Because why? The Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. Those things that, yes, we need to have to sustain the body, but it's not the only thing that God is calling us to crave after. He says the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it is righteousness, it is peace. Say it with me, it is joy. Jesus calls us out of that culture to be generously to give what we have. What we don't see is that when we trust him in this, he blesses us. We're not called to suffer through giving to others. You know, sometimes people get the wrong message. You know, if I can just sacrifice myself in order that other someone else can be helped, you know, now I have nothing. How are you going to help someone else down the road? But it's a matter of how we are approached by God's Spirit and how we are obedient to what He tells us to do. The thing is, it's just that we won't see the blessing in it until we learn to be obedient. And that's the key. When we give, we have to be ready to listen at a moment's notice when God speaks or he puts someone, something in our path, that how we can be obedient. Probably the most generous and thankful people you know aren't the wealthiest. It's entirely possible to give generously, even with limited means. When it comes to generosity, Paul has a particular lexicon. The words he associates with giving generously are words like abound, increase, enlarge, overflowing, surpassing grace. And so when we abound in our generosity, thankfulness is the natural response. We can't internalize this truth of this miracle until we regularly practice generosity. And I see a room full of people that have practiced that generosity. This message is an encouragement to continue on, but to understand that there is true thankfulness to God because of your generosity. It's not you give, 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 give. Put it in the plate, put it in the plate. But truly, you are a blessing to the kingdom of God. And there is thankfulness to God from people that you may never hear from on this side of heaven. But I believe there are going to be people in heaven that are going to come up to us and say thank you. They're going to say what for? I was a life that was changed. How? Because when you gave to that missionary work, when you gave to that person who was going up the hill in a wheelchair, all of the things that you heard this morning from Brother Bob, and up and above all of these things, God's allowing us to abound, to increase, to enlarge our territories, to allow His grace to overflow us. It's a surpassing grace. You see, God is generously, increasingly generous to us. You can see this in creation, how He blesses people who follow Him and those who don't follow. 
You see, God doesn't bless us because we deserve what he gives. God gives us abundantly because it's his nature to be generous. Anytime we realize how good God has been to us, it becomes obvious, church, that we should act generously with others because we're thankful for what God has done for us. And the church say amen to that. So as we close here today, just like the psalm reminds us, give, give with a grateful heart because he has given us Jesus Christ. I love how the words say, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Would you stand with me this morning as we worship the Lord in the song, give thanks with a grateful heart.
us be able to not only thank you, Lord, eternally, Lord, but let us give thanks in the assembly. Let us tell others of the, the remarkable things that you have done in our lives so that others may know of your goodness. Today, Lord, as we leave this place, go with us, Lord, as the psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Today, God, it has been good to be in your presence and with the people of God. Bless now their life, their thanksgiving. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. And together, God's people say, amen. And then give God praise today. Have a nice day.